Lesson 11.5, finding the domain algebraically. I know you have graphs on your paper, but I have covered them up uh, because that is the answer. I just want to be able to, when we get done with the answer, be able to compare it to what the graph looks like. <clears throat> so on number one, this is called a rational function. And our whole last unit was about this. <clears throat> we could factor this on top and bottom. So top I could take out an 8 and that would be times an x plus 1. On the bottom I could take out an 8 and that would be an x plus 3. <clears throat> and so nothing cancels other than you could cancel out the 8s. But that's not a factor in terms of it doesn't have x with it. Um, and so when we're doing domain that is where x is a problem and where it's a problem it's where x equals zero in the denominator and so we just can't have this equaling zero so i would set my x plus three equal to zero i would subtract a three over and so x can't be negative three now if you wouldn't have factored from the beginning you would still see that setting that equal to zero would get the same answer so either way it doesn't matter an x such that x cannot be negative 3. <clears throat> and then that's the graph and you can see right there is where the asymptote's at. Right number 2, I would definitely have to factor the denominator since it's a quadratic to see if anything would cancel and also if it doesn't then that means <clears throat> that I uh, have two different asymptotes. And so we need two numbers that multiply to make negative 35 that add to make two. That would be seven and negative five. So yeah, nothing cancels. So I just cannot have the denominator making zero. So that would be when x is negative seven and when x is five. So x can't equal negative seven or five. And again, those numbers plugged in here and here, minus 35, that would make zero. And so you can see on this graph where it has the double asymptotes. All right, number three, <clears throat> square root function. Think about what square roots can't be. Square root of four is two. Square root of one is one. It's the number times itself, right? Square root of nothing is still nothing. But when I get square root of negative one, I cannot have a number times itself equaling a negative. It's always going to become positive. And so this is actually I, imaginary. So you cannot square root negatives. We can write this as an inequality saying this part that's under my radical, under my square root, needs to be greater than zero. That means it needs to be positive. So I would have to... Um, go ahead and solve this like I would any equation. I guess I should go and put greater than or equal to. It could equal 0 too because we can square root 0. And so I would just go on and add 24. And then divide by negative 8. <clears throat> Hoping you remember about inequalities the only rule that's different is when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. So now I'd say my x values need to be less than or equal to negative 3. And you can see it right here that everything is going to the left of x is negative 3. All right, number 4. <clears throat> That's not having a quadratic under a square root. So we would want to say this whole thing needs to come out greater than or equal to zero every single time. I'm going to have to factor this. That would be negative 7 plus 3. Okay, there's no multiplying or dividing. I'm just having two different things. So I would have x um, is 7. Let's see, how do I want to show that? I guess I'll just put equal. 7 and x equals negative 3 for right now. But then think of a number line. Negative 3 would be smaller than 7. We need to try 
numbers to see what happens here. Um, if I were to plug in 8, which would be here, right? Bigger than 7. If I were to plug in 8 and I did 8 squared um, minus 4 times 8, so it would be 64 minus 32 is 32 minus 21. I don't even care what that is, but is that going to be a number greater than or equal to 0? Yes. <clears throat> And so what that means is the other outside should work. Let's pick negative 4 because that would be smaller than negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 times negative 3. Or negative 4 times negative 4, sorry. I did negative 3. Negative 4 squared would be 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 would be plus 16. That's 32 minus 21. That's going to be greater than or equal to 0. Yes. So it means that I'm going an or where I'm going this way or this way. If I tried, say, 0, 0 squared minus 4 times 0 is 0, minus 21, that's negative 21. That is not greater than or equal to 0, so that does not work. So I want to say that my domain is x values less than or equal to negative 3 or x values greater than or equal to 7. So it looks like that. <clears throat> All right, number 5 very similar but I figured we have questions on these because they're new to us this needs to be greater than or equal to zero I would always factor out a negative first before I do any actual factoring that changes the sign of everything and then I want to factor that into x plus 8 times x minus 5 and so my solutions are going to be at negative 8 and at 5. So let's make a number line again. Negative 8 would be the smaller, 5 would be the bigger. Let's try a number bigger than 5 that would be in this boundary. Let's try 6. If I were to plug in 6 squared and make it negative, that would be negative 36. Minus 3 times 6 is minus 18 plus 40. Is that going to be greater than 0, greater than or equal to? No, because that's already negative 50 something plus 40 would be a negative, so it's not here, then that means it should be here in the middle. This is an and, and the reason why is you're really dividing by a negative 1 here, and that flips the symbol to say less than or equal to, so a less than is an and, a great tor is an or. We learned that from compound inequalities in algebra. Um, if I plugged in a 0, I'll show you that this is 0, this is 0. 40 is greater than or equal to 0. If I plugged in negative 9, it wouldn't work. Okay, so then I would say that x values are less than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to negative 8. It's between these two values. You could also do here, negative 8 to 5. You could do brackets around the numbers telling you um, that there's closed points. There are points on those values. So this or this is okay. All right, and then number 6, last one. Um, now we have kind of two things happening. We have a square root in the denominator. So we used to say that square roots just can't be negative. Well, now I can't even have this equaling zero. So this needs to be set greater than zero. Okay, and so if I were to divide out a negative one, if I want to do it kind of a faster way, that would now change into x squared minus 3x minus 18 is less than 0. That factors into an x uh, minus 6 times an x plus 3. And then I know those are solutions at 6 and at negative 3. And I know it's going to be an and because this is a less than symbol. But you could also check it and see what works. Negative 3 would be smaller, so I would say my x values are going to be less than 6. And then greater than negative 3. And so you can see where it's contained, and it's asymptotes. So it can't actually equal those values of negative 3 and 6. You could also do this. Parentheses negative 3 comma 6 saying they don't have points there.